Hi, I'm Sunny Goldberg and welcome to Know Your Neighbors. It is an absolute pleasure to be sitting here with Natalie Fellows, um, daughter of a previous um, uh, person who sat in that exact chair, Peter. And um, you are the engagement director? Engagement officer. officer. But Ooh, thank you, you for the promotion. Come. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> engagement officer yes. of Trust for Public Land. Mm -hmm. Something Brad and I are really, uh, really love. It's a wonderful organization. Yeah. And I really want you to come and talk about it today so our viewers out there who might not know about mm -hmm. it would get to. But first, we need to have a little background. Okay. Okay, good. so I said you're Jeannie and Peter's daughter. Yes. And you grew up here. I did. I grew up in Mamernick, right on Palmer Avenue. Um, actually right next to Walter's hot dog stand. And uh, there's a reason for that, <laughs> Miss Natalie, and what is yes, that? Yes, there is. Um, my grandfather, Gene Warrington, is the owner of Walter's hot dogs. So. Wow. And so this is a very long, your great grandpa? Yes. And it's a uh, historic, mm -hmm. um, not just historic in terms of the landmark historic, but everybody in Mamaroneck and Larchmont goes to Walters. Yeah, absolutely. It's just part of what we do. Yeah. And I can think about those french fries right now and say <laughs> goodbye. I'd like to go and get them. But all right, so you grew up, you went to Mamaroneck High School. Mm -hmm. Then what happened? So I went to Mamaroneck High School. I graduated in 2004. Um, and I went off to Marist College in Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, and I got a bachelor's degree in advertising and communications, actually. Um, and right out of college, <laughs> I did not go into advertising. Yeah, okay, so there <laughs> went that uh, degree, but fine. Yeah, although it was a great experience going <laughs> to Marist, and I learned a ton. Um, but I actually, straight from college, moved to Thailand, and I taught English there for a year and a half. Wow, how lucky are you? Uh, yeah, Ooh. that was fantastic. I have um, very supportive parents. <laughs> Yes, who you were, do. Who were on my side during that. Um, I don't think they have a lot of hot dogs and french fries and milkshakes and things like that. In no. <laughs> no, unfortunately they don't. I was <gasps> scoping out business opportunities, <laughs> but not, not much desire for hot dogs in, um, in Thailand, but maybe one day. So you went to Thailand, then you came back. I did, I did. And then um, I kind of got into working as a fundraiser, working in development. Uh, my first position was at the New York Botanical Garden, actually. Uh. They have a wonderful free to show. I just saw it. I loved it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there. It's a fabulous organization. Um, and then I, I took a little break from that to go to grad school, actually. <laughs> okay, Peter and Jeannie again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I went to the London School of Economics. Wow. And I got a master's in health, community, and development. Huh. Um, <laughs> How yeah. wonderful. You, I don't think you were expecting such no, a No, I'm just thrilled. <laughs> and, and you spent how long in London, you lucky dog? I was there for a year. It was a okay. one-year master's degree. My um, daughter did her year uh, semester abroad in London, and we got to visit. Oh, that's as close as I got to. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Great place. So civilized. It's, it's a great place to be. Unfortunately, I saw most of the inside of the library. <laughs> well, of course. And yeah. then you came home. And then I came home. And? Um, and I <laughs> and I started working at a, a small nonprofit that does drama therapy for a while, um, and then I made my way over to the Trust for Public Land. Okay, now <laughs> we're at the and Trust for Public Land. For those who don't know, mm -hmm. it is an organization that does what, sweetie? Sure. So the Trust for Public Land was established in um, 1972. It's a national land conservation organization, um, and we preserve land and we also create parks for people. Um, and at the core of the work that we do, our, our founding belief is the need for people to be connected to nature. Um, so that was something that our founders identified that was really important for a healthy community, for a healthy life. Um, so they set out to make sure that people everywhere in cities and outside of cities would be able to have this connection to nature. How nice. Yeah. Now, I uh, only know because my girlfriend Dudley took me to a wonderful uh, uh, playground that had been developed in Harlem, I believe it was, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't get over what they had done. They had a little place for braiding girls' hair. They had just the kids got to choose what they wanted in their playground. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about these playgrounds? Yeah, absolutely. I um, think you brought some pictures or I whatever. I did. I brought some photos, which 
provide a really great illustration of the impact that these playgrounds make on the school. Um, we say that we're converting asphalt barren lots into mm. lush, vibrant, beautiful playgrounds. Um, and I could talk about it all day, but when you see the before and yeah, after. Right, which you're showing us right now, which that's, is fantastic. That's the before, and you see it's, there's just not much there. Right, um, and very depressing, actually. It's very depressing. A lot of kids actually complain about being worried that they're going to fall and scrape their knees because yeah. it's all asphalt. Um, and then you see the after, and it's just this beautiful, lush playground. Um, they're all incredibly unique, and the reason for that is we do have the students design the playgrounds I couldn't themselves. believe it. That people come in, the architects talk to the students. I'm not yeah. wrong about that, right? They, no, you're absolutely right. There's real communication, right. Mm -hmm. and I just thought that was so impressive. It's one of my favorite aspects about our playgrounds program. It's our what we call participatory design. Um, it's a three-month program where every week we have our staff go in. We have landscape architects that we work with go in, and they work with the students. And I um, even know that when I talked to one of the teachers. He's a math teacher. Mm -hmm. They did math things about the, um, you know, what the playground was going to be, the size of the mm -hmm. play. It's fantastic. They brought the curriculum uh, in, the, they made the playground a part of the curriculum. Absolutely. I mean, it's really from soup to nuts. We have the kids start by going out to the playground and just measuring the perimeter. Um, we have them observing slope and shade. Um, we have them really thinking about how the playground's currently being used and how they want it to be used. Mm -hmm. And when they're thinking about that, they're not just thinking about themselves. They're thinking about what will the younger kids be doing on the playground? That's what so will cute. the older kids That's be doing as well? And these children are so lit up by it and they're so excited. And usually kids don't get to control exactly. aspects of their life. It's always adults and teachers and yeah. principals or whatever. And this really seems to me like uh, enabling them to have some control over mm -hmm. um, something that is very important mm -hmm. and will be left for future yeah. generations, which is exactly terrific. We, um, a lot of the work that we do is in lower income neighborhoods. Yeah. And we say many times we're coming into these schools and these children haven't been listened to. It's the first time that they've had adults listen to them, ask them for advice, ask them for their input, and yeah. then actually carry out those actions. And they get to see the results. And they get to see the results. Which is so terrific. Yeah. Now, it's not just playgrounds, I know, uh, asphalt. You do gardening as well, correct? Yes, we try and Which make the playground. Which is a connection to your botanical. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. On, there's on. connections all over. <laughs> um, yeah, we try and make the playgrounds as lush as possible. So actually we plant about 20 to 30 trees per site, and we also incorporate gardens. Um, what's also special and unique about our playgrounds is um, they're green infrastructure playgrounds, which means they have different elements that allow them to absorb rainwater, wow. um, which prevents flooding nearby, and that in turn prevents combined sewer overflow, which is... Um, not a, not a fun topic to talk about, no, but it's a but huge it's environmental a huge, problem in New York is. City. And, and in an old, uh, older environment like New York. But mm -hmm. now you brought a video, correct? Yes. And I'd like to take a look at that, but because uh, Manhattan itself is, and, and Brooklyn, I know you have uh, yeah. covered many places, is so old and the infrastructure is so old that what you're talking about with the runoff mm -hmm. is very, very important. It's a huge problem. So our playgrounds, they, they perform, you know, multiple duties. They're um, providing a lot of education for the kids, a lot of environmental education. Um, they give kids a, a connection to nature and that's through the gardens that we incorporate and the video will show um, Let's take a how quick important look at that it. is. Okay. So, yeah, sure. <laughs> Nature is very powerful, and seeing its effect on children makes me feel wonderful. I love it. The consequences of not providing green space is disconnect from who we are. We're mammals, so we forget that. In the urban world, it's really easy to cover things up. We cover it up with sidewalks. The green team is a group of committed students who are learning what it means to be stewards of our Earth. The Green Yard is a place where that stewardship all happens. It was a cement parking lot. There were no trees, nothing growing. Drug dealers would hang out. You didn't see kids playing. Without the trust for public land, we wouldn't have this space. We transformed it into a beautiful, vibrant, green community space. The trust for public land have the same values. During the school day, it is used by the school. There's a track, there's 
climbing material, there's a garden, there's a rain catch system, we have composting. You'll see kids crunching on carrots or picking a tomato instead of guzzling down a soda pop or potato chips. The green space, it's like an oasis. It allows things to grow. Not only what you see in front of you, the plants, but it allows the connection between people to grow and develop and it's real. When there are more community green spaces, the future looks alive, vibrant, full of energy that is real and connected and growing. I really enjoyed that. Uh, my vegan husband would be thrilled. <laughs> and my granddaughter, Lucy, who um, messes around in our garden in the back uh, yeah. and just will pick a, vet, a, um, a red pepper off of the, and just put it in. I've never seen anything like it. It's yeah. quite amazing. Yeah. Um, it's just beautiful. I love what you're doing. Yeah, it's unbelievable when you get kids involved in planting vegetables and really getting their hands dirty, how um, amenable they'll be to eating vegetables. And that, that uh, it, it, it's true, they watch them grow, etc. Mm -hmm. Unlike someone who was raised in uh, Mamernik and had <laughs> lots of green and, yeah. and you could go even to the harbor and, you know, there's it, kids in Manhattan, this is just really a miracle. Now, uh, if somebody wanted to learn more, I know you mm -hmm. have a website. Mm -hmm. What is that, sweetie? It's www.tpl.org. Dot org, that's easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very At, simple. Um, and TPL. Uh, it's not just in New York. No. You mentioned that it's, mm -hmm. I know San Francisco is very active. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Have you done things uh, like outside of this country or is it all in yeah, the United States? For, for the most part, it's in the United States. We have um, over 30 offices across the country. Wow. Uh, we started in San Francisco. Okay, that's why. We moved, we have our New York office since about the early 80s, but we're as far as Hawaii. So during the winter, we're all wishing that we were in the Hawaii yeah. office. <laughs> Everybody's going to run to the, can I just <laughs> yeah. check out the Hawaii office, yeah. how they're doing just right? To, you know, just to you know, brainstorm a little bit. Right. Um, so we have a really expansive program that's nationwide. And, and what's unique and special is that depending on where we are, the program might vary a little bit. So in New York and in New York City, our Playgrounds program, it's really one of the gems. It's one of the one of our largest programs. But you might go to another state and they don't have the Playgrounds program yet. Um, we are working on expanding it and we're talking with other offices and trying to help guide them through the process. Right. Now, if uh, I was in Hawaii or if I was in Podunk, Iowa, whatever, Kansas City, Missouri, where I'm from, and I uh, didn't know about your program, do you bring people in to see, actually see the results and talk with the kids uh, about what happened here? Yeah. So in New York, we have a lot of stewardship for our playgrounds program, actually. Stewardship. What? Stewardship. So we try and go back to the sites that we've worked with and just make sure that for at least 10 years after we've left that everything's okay, that the playground is maintained, oh, that the gardens continue to So you don't just leave them to float, uh, you know, you, no. you really yeah. have some follow-up. Yeah, and sometimes we bring people with us to come and check out the playgrounds and see the work that we've done and they can help with, with digging in the soil and helping right. us garden and when we, have, when we have time in the spring to do that. I actually went on a bus with a group of people when we went out to see the playground and then we did a couple of visitations mm -hmm. and it was just really, I, I just, it felt so good yeah. to see th what's going on. And I know that um, the issue, as you said, runoff and, mm -hmm. and environmental and green, I mean, you guys are really at the forefront of that. Absolutely. We have a partnership with the Department of Environmental Protection for these green infrastructure playgrounds. We've been working with them since 2012, and they just want us to ramp up production as much I'll as bet. we can because it's one of their most successful programs in terms of um, incorporating green infrastructure into pre-existing um, conditions in New York. So that's really exciting that they're so happy with the work that we're doing. Um, and when you think about it, one little playground can absorb about half a million gallons of rainwater in a year. And when you add up all the playgrounds we're working on, it can have a huge impact on this issue. So it's really exciting. Wow. <laughs> now, our, our, our New York City school system, I assume they're thrilled with what you're doing. Do they cooperate? 
Oh, absolutely, yeah. The DOE is one of our one of our best partners, of course, and the School Construction Authority as well. Um, really, it's just a great program, and we've been doing it since the mid '90s. So we've worked with um, about 185 playgrounds. Wow, that's so, pretty amazing. 185 yeah. now are looking the way the ones I saw. I mean, that's really terrific. Um, I assume you stimulate jobs too. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> when you're talking about construction projects, that absolutely has to. It's, yeah. it's got to be a win-win situation. Oh, it is. It is. It has multiple layers of impact, and that is really um, a facet of, of TPL's work. The Trust for Public Land really does pr projects that have multiple benefits. In your opinion, is there any negative? I mean, what, what, what would stop somebody from, or is it mainly that you don't have enough funds to do as many as you'd like to do? Yeah, you know, it always comes back to the funding. To the money. So we are a nonprofit organization, um, and we do get support from the DEP um, and from the School Construction Authority, but we also have to raise private funds as well for each playground. So, so you're a 501? Yeah, yeah, we are a registered nonprofit. So the more funds we raise, the more playgrounds we can actually build around the city. Wow. So. And in those playgrounds, those gardens mm -hmm. exist. Do you have gardens existing on their own? Um, um, like rooftop gardens, I mean, uh, and Brad has a heart program, Humane Ed program, and they have been visiting rooftop gardens in uh, Brooklyn and things mm -hmm. that I didn't even know existed. And many of the restaurants use mm -hmm. those rooftop gardens cool. for their fresh, which is a wonderful uh, relationship. Um, yeah. Um, so we actually helped protect about 70 community gardens in New York. Uh -huh. um, the, the Trust for Public Land never holds on to any land, so right. those were eventually conveyed to um, different conservancies that we helped create. Um, so we have about, yeah, about 70 community gardens around, around New York that wouldn't be there if it wasn't for... And those people have volunteers who keep it going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's I, all about I know the community. Bette, <laughs> I know Bette Midler does that in different areas. Yeah. But, um, I, I didn't realize. And, and do you have somebody who's in charge of volunteers, so to speak? If somebody out there wanted to volunteer, you just... What? No, for our community gardens, we kind of passed on the leadership uh, of those. To the individual areas. Yes. Yes, so we're, so we're not in charge of those anymore, but we are here, we're there to advise as much as, as they need it. Um, but yeah, it's really in the hands of the communities, so. Wow. Well, I tell you, Nellie, this is uh, all, I mean, I know a lot of it about it, but mm -hmm. this is all new to me. And if somebody wanted to get into a position like you're uh, in, mm -hmm. even if they didn't go to the London <laughs> School of Economics, but they just um, yeah. were thinking about teaching or schools or whatever, mm -hmm. how would you, what kind of advice would you give to somebody out there? Well, I think it's really important just to have a lot of passion for what you do. If you really care about the environment and you care about this work, um, then that'll, that'll help a lot, right? That's the first step right. is loving what you do. Um, but, you know, there are many roads, many roads to get there. Definitely. <laughs> but education-wise, mm -hmm. um, you kind of grew from thing yeah. to thing and yeah. uh, experimented until you found what you really love. Sure. So and are still probably experimenting. <laughs> yeah, always, always, always experimenting. Um, so right now, the role that I'm in, um, I'm an engagement officer, which means that I fundraise for the Trust for Public Land, but I also have um, the privilege of engaging with our donors. So I find it's more than just raising money for our programs, but I genuinely care about connecting people with the organization that they care about and a mission right. that they care about and want to support. Um, so, you know, there's no particular background that you need for fundraising. I would say mm. advertising and communications didn't hurt. <laughs> that, that didn't hurt. Yeah, fundraising, I find you have to genuinely, as you said, care about it. Mm -hmm. And I know in Mamaroneck people cross the street often when they see me because they know I'm going to ask for something. <laughs> but you have to not just feel a passion. You, you have to be able to look people in the face and say, you know, I'm really hoping you'll help me with this one. Mm -hmm. I know your dad, Peter is working always on historic things in yeah. the Mamaroneck and there are so many wonderful um, workers in the village of Mamaroneck but I do see that young people like yourself are it's hard to get new young people involved mm -hmm. is what I'm finding they're working full-time they're you know very busy and I don't know do you have advice for what we should be doing to get more volunteer um, yeah going yeah well I think like you said definitely people are really really busy this day and age. I think anyone who's living in Westchester might be working in New York City and it's, yeah. it's a lot. It's a really fast pace. But I, I do think that young people in my generation 
genuinely care about giving back. I think they're finding more and more research to support that. And I think people in my generation are saying they want to be involved in things that matter and they want to be working for companies and corporations that, um, that have a conscience and that actually do some social good. So it might just Boy, be a matter of outreach. <laughs> this is great. You should have hope. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you think that you indeed are finding young people do have that kind of, of sensitivity and care enough yeah. um, about it. Um, I know your family is a philanthropic family from your, I didn't know your great grandpa, but certainly your grandpa has um, always reached out and been probably the first person in the community to um, head up some kind of a drive for whatever maybe of our good. But I, I really find that um, we're getting older and we need new people mm -hmm. to come forth and take over. Well, it helps to have role models, huh. right? I have my grandfather as a role model. Um, and when you set that example for your children, I think it really rubs off and it, right. it, it helps a lot. That's a, a really important point. If uh, you see your friend, I remember my, my father used to say, you learn by example. Mm -hmm. And we watched our parents and just as you watched your family, um, it really does help. And it's part of our life. Yeah. And it's always been a part of my life, even though people do cross the street, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is something that makes me proud. When yeah. we, we, um, have, uh, we had a fair here in Mamernick that we had people walking up and down the street. They hadn't seen each other 25 years. It was so great. And it was 350 volunteers who did it. Uh, and my partner, Carolyn Pomerantz, and I just looked at each other and said, wow, you know, and the, it is a friendly village, and, and mm. Larchmont is a lovely place. Yeah. And the encouraging thing is I'm seeing some young people who have married and have children mm -hmm. now moving back. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I'm hoping my daughter does the same thing, <laughs> but you can never tell. But yes. it, it, my daughter and son-in-law are in uh, Manhattan, and they certainly come up to visit and see mm -hmm. that it is a wonderful, vibrant place. Yeah. Um, and like I said, you give me hope. <laughs> There's no That's doubt good. about it. So we don't have that much time okay. left, but if you, is there anything you might not have told us about Trust for Public Land that you want to make sure we get across? Sure. So we focused a lot on our playgrounds program, which is something that's near and dear to my heart. So I do talk a lot about it. something I've seen, so yes. therefore, yes. you know, it feels comfortable. Yeah. But we do have a lot of other work going on. So in our New York program, since the 80s, we've conserved over 130,000 acres of land across the state. And that's officially, that can't be touched. That now. cannot be touched. And we also wow. um, are working on a huge project in Queens right now, the Queensway. It's a rails to trails project. So it takes um, derelict railroad and it's going to transform it into a 3.5 mile linear park. Sounds like the High Line. Exactly. Terrific. But it is bigger than the High Line. Wow. <laughs> about three times the size. Um, less cost and also it's going to be really about the community and the culture that's in Central Queens. So we're very excited about that project. We're getting it up and running and, and hoping hoping that good things for it. Culture is yes. Queens, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, that's just unbelievable. Uh, yeah, that's a fabulous thing. Yeah. Right. Any other projects that we didn't talk about? Those are the big ones. Our land conservation, our playgrounds program, and the Queensway. And we're always focused, of course, on climate and ways that we can protect communities that are in vulnerable coastal areas from severe weather. And that's part of our land conservation as well, being strategic in where we preserve land. So. Wow. So this little girl from Large Run and Marinick has been um, working on this. How many years you've been working on this? You know, I've only been with the Trust for Public Land um, a, about a year and three months. About a year and Not three months. Not too long. But, but you really learned a lot about yes. uh, the, uh, which makes you have the passion for that, right? Yes. And honestly, it's the tip of the iceberg. There's so much we're doing across the country, so many incredible things, and we're in a really big period of growth right now. So there's only going to be more going on. At you the know, it has always land. upset me that Manhattan, their water, they didn't use their water, you know, they, and now going down to Battery Park mm -hmm. is just mind boggling what you see. And this Queensway, I mm -hmm. mean, you know, when the High Line was saved, it was such a big brouhaha. Mm -hmm. they, they thought it was just this big junk. That, it's fantastic. Yeah. I, I was at the New Whitney the other day looking out over the High Line and thought to myself, wow. And the 
talk about every season has different greenery mm -hmm. and are they going to do such a thing oh absolutely they're going to make sure that it's really seasonal and um, it's close to about 12 schools it's within a five minute walk oh, of 12 you. schools. Many of those schools don't have anywhere for kids to play outdoors, so it's gonna be an environmental education resource as well for those students. That is mind boggling. And maybe some of those kids will come and work on the gardens and yeah. get themselves involved and do things that are naturally wonderfully helpful when you're trying to develop. Mm -hmm. I had no idea about Queensway. It's very exciting. Um, there's a website www.thequeensway.org. Wow. Um, we're working on that with our friends of the Queensway organization, our partner organization, and um, it's a community group, and it's just a wonderful project. So. I wonder if they, I, they must have had communication with the Highline people, right? You know, we are more than happy to chat with the people who worked on the Highline and get tips and advice from them and guidance, so absolutely. It was quite an, uh, it was some devoted citizens who raised the mm -hmm. money and saved it, and I think I went back to Mayor Koch. Uh, I'm not exactly sure but whoever did that we have to give them a huge thank you because it's uh, really fabulous how long do you think the Queensway will take to make it functional well, we are we are hoping to do design of the first portion of the Queensway soon um, and then hopefully we'll be able to start with construction as well but it, it takes a while and we need to get as much political uh, public support as possible you get architects how I was just wondering did they propose uh, send in proposals or? yeah so if you do a request for proposals we can get different, different and do you have a architect already picked for the Queensway or uh, I don't think so. Not that I know of, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't be the first person to know. Okay. <laughs> but but it's in the works. I mean, it's officially. We are we are you know planning to start that first section of design, and you know we're hoping it's going to gain momentum from there. Yeah. So I, that's, that's where we are. You know, uh, we have like. I'm getting a signal that we only have like <laughs> two minutes, and I'm thinking to myself, what did I not ask Natalie? Is there anything I forgot? You know, you've done a great job. <laughs> oh, come on. Really? I think, yeah, yeah. I think, um, I think that pretty much that covers a lot of what we do. It's really, and I, just to reiterate again, the work that we do is for people. It's to, to get people out on the land connecting. And if you really wanted to, again, uh, tpl.com. Mm -hmm. tpl.org. Org, yep. of course. It's, uh, forgive me. Yes. tpl.org. Mm -hmm. And you can get on and see what you're doing. And, yeah. and it's uh, not that far to go to Manhattan. It's about 31 minutes direct. No, from it's here. not. And we've got a, a playground opening in Manhattan, which is oh, very yeah. exciting. Which one? It's PS 111. It's in Hell's Kitchen, ah, 53rd and 9th Avenue. It'll be opening on June 10th. That'll be our opening celebration. Well, maybe so we'll excited. get somebody back to talk about uh, yeah. the new playground. How well, June 10th, my goodness. June 10th is the opening. And uh, do, do all of the political people come and make a big brouhaha? We invite them. You invite we them. We invite them. That's all you can do is invite them, right? Yes, and we have um, Adrian Benefi is on staff. He's former New York City Parks Commissioner. Yes, right. He'll be speaking at that opening, and he's fantastic. So I, did, I actually met him. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. I don't know. Yes. Oh, we uh, Dudley had a, a dinner. At oh, one okay. Point. And I and he really is, and he knows all these people. So. Oh, he knows. Yes, he He's knows. Very so well much. connected, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, as far so Juneteenth, this opens in Hell's Kitchen. Yes. And it is uh, the school is a wonderful mixed group of, and that's mm -hmm. got to be something major down there. Absolutely, and all of our playgrounds are community playgrounds as well, so when school is out of session, the community is invited to use them. Well, I can't thank you enough, sweetie. It was wonderful. Oh, thank you First of all, it's delightful to meet you. All we've done is, <laughs> has been, and uh, uh, any daughter of um, Peter and, oh, uh, and Jeannie's is welcome here anytime. I wish you the best of luck, thank and you. thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you all, and definitely check out Trust for Public Land. This is Sunny Goldberg saying bye-bye. See you next time.